everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. Again, a special shout out and thank you to all of our Patreon contributors. We really do appreciate everything that you do for this channel. Uh, if you're interested in being a part of that, we'll put a link in the description down below. Alright, so in today's episode, we're going to go ahead and install the ship's mass. And we're going to be using the KA Detail Set for this. These are big brass pieces and so there's some things that go along with it. Once they're installed, I'm going to go ahead and install the big aerial lines that stretch between the two. This is the T line for the Marconi radio. I'll explain that in the video. And then we'll go ahead and run the lines, the bottom part of the T down, to the top of the Marconi radio room where they're secured. Uh, I'll show you the color paint my client has picked out for this. And a couple other little details and that's about it. This is a big deal because it's bringing us to the end of the build. There's not a whole lot left to do at this point in terms of like major construction. So the light is definitely at the end of the tunnel. Feel free to like and subscribe if you'd like to see um, yeah, where the ship goes. So I think we're, we're, getting, we're getting really close. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's it. Let's just get into the build. Okay, the mast. This is where uh, this episode gets interesting. So forward mast, this is the mounting point right here. We're using the KA kit parts. The first thing they want you to do uh, is you've got this little 3D printed base that doesn't fit. You have to sand it to drop down in here like so and that's where the mass goes. Now <laughs> I want to show you this. It's solid and then I think you can see here if I turn it the right way, see the inside? It's not flat. So that is your rake the angle at which the uh, crane, or sorry, the uh, mass leans backwards. So the high end would need to go towards the bow. So I just put a pencil mark on that to help keep us oriented here. And the, the way it's printed, you can kind of see if you got it right. So anyway, there it goes, that's the bow. Now then the ma mass itself is brass. Uh, so it fits in there, and if you put it down flush, you've got your your angle set. Um, huh. Here's the thing. This is a big, heavy piece of brass, and they want you to just glue it in and mount it flush. I mean, even the kit plastic is keyed and goes down in here a little bit. Uh, so that's a problem, right? Here's the next problem that we have. This is the bottom of the mast. Uh, this is your next piece. It's keyed. It goes on like that. And then here's the next piece, it's keyed, it goes on like that. And then this little piece is the top. FYI, this is all steel for fun facts, and this piece was actually uh, mahogany. But, but look at it. It's not tight at all. Uh, you're going to have to glue this heavy brass thing together, get it straight, and then hope it doesn't tip over. So... Here's what I'm going to suggest for the average person at home. Get yourself some 5-minute epoxy or use the E6000 glue, which uh, takes 24 hours to dry. It's super sticky and gives you a lot of room. And put a bunch of it on there so that you can put this thing together and take time to do the best job you possibly can to get it as straight as you can. That is what I suggest. That's not what I'm going to do, though. All right, first order of the business is this base. We've got this big heavy piece. It's mostly flat on the bottom. You can see a little nub from where it was uh, machined and cut off of the lathe. We cannot just glue this on here like this and hope for the best. That is, that's not gonna work uh, at all. We need stronger support. So fortunately, uh, on our forecastle deck, straight through here about oh, four centimeters or three quarters of an inch down, you have the well deck and that extends to here so what we need to do or what I want to do is put a hole in the bottom of this thing and I want to put a brass rod in here and I want to drill a hole down through here so I can put this thing in and we've got a positive anchor point. We're going to use uh, this brass tube right here it will fit into the base like this nicely uh, we'll, I don't know, we'll go up a half inch or so about yay deep we'll secure it and then we'll leave plenty to go down into the bow uh, through all the layers through here so that it's strong and works. Now 
to do that, uh, I realize this is not fair. Not everyone has these tools. I have this tool, we're gonna use it. That's just the way that it is. We're gonna go out to my mini lathe uh, out in the shop, my other shop. I have a mini machine lathe and it's perfect for this. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I know this might be kind of hard to see, but there's the bottom of the mass chucked up. Um, this is my cutting tool. We're gonna just do a little facing uh, maneuver here. So all I did was just knock off that little bead and smooth up that surface. Now we're gonna go ahead and start a little pilot hole. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get that pilot hole in. All right, that's it. Now it's time to switch this out uh, and put in our drill bit. Okay, drill bit's installed. Uh, I'm gonna drill this out real quick. I know some of you are probably gonna say, well, Ben, you should put a little bit of oil on there. Maybe, it's just not gonna get that hot. I'm not too worried about it. It's brass, it's soft. For extended operations and hardened steel, yeah, I would probably do that. Oh, it moved a little bit in my chuck. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. Soft brass, I don't wanna leave a dent in it. Okay, that's enough. That went in about a half of an inch. So let's go ahead and get this out of here. Okay, back in the shop, here's the uh, hole we bored in the bottom, centered up nicely on our mast. This is my little piece of brass rod. It fits snugly in there like so. Now I'm going with this big piece of brass. We're gonna run it all the way down in the ship. What this will do is it, and it's a tube, as you can see right there, it will bend uh, with the appropriate amount of pressure. So this will allow us to make some adjustments. So what I want to do is secure it in there. You can use five minute epoxy, CA glue, uh, E6000, and I'm gonna go ahead and solder it instead. I want this thing to really be in place. Now you have a very large heavy piece of brass and a pretty heavy duty piece of brass tubing. You're not gonna get away with using a soldering iron. So we'll have to queue up the torch. Okay, uh, I've gone ahead and slid this brass rod in. I'm utilizing my 12th hand here, and I did put a little bit of uh, resin, solder resin, down here and here to encourage the solder to go where I want. I just want to put a tiny little bit of solder right on uh, this joint right here. Obviously, I need to sit a little bit flush, so... I'm just going to go ahead and start heating this up a little bit and the idea is to get the brass hot enough that it melts the solder when I touch it and that was it see that little bit went on there a little more there we go Got to run around that's it that tiny little bit right there is plenty now it's hot so let it cool uh, grab it with something that won't uh, cause you have problems. You can just set it on the floor. I have a concrete floor down here. It'll cool off right away, but this is not coming apart. All right, so I bet you're never gonna guess what we're gonna do next. Uh, this is the next piece that drops on, and as you can see, that is the tolerances that we have here. So uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna solder this into position. I'll show that. And when I stick the solder on, I'm just gonna shove this straight down and hold it as tight as I can till it's done cooling and I'm gonna check it for straight. This will probably result in me having to reheat it several times which I'm not gonna bore you all with until I get this as straight as I possibly can. If you're soldering your masks at home and you're like oh Ben you're screwing up this is exactly how to do it to make sure it's straight and not have any problems please comment down below sharing how to do that because I'm going to have to do this again, I believe, with the Ponto set on mine. And there are other people who are going to come along with the K kit who are going to do this to theirs as well. And 
this is kind of a pain in the rear. So if you would share, I'd appreciate that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this thing ready to go here. So I'm putting a little uh, flux on a toothpick and I'm applying it. And for those who don't know, flux attracts the solder when it's melted. And the idea is to put this flux where you want the solder to end up. And in this case, I want it to end up on the joint. I don't want it ending up on the face, although I'm sure we'll end up with some on the outside anyway. And that's not the end of the world. Uh, and then I want a little bit inside of here. And there's a couple of ways we could handle this whole thing. Um, since we're putting the solder or the flux on the side, and, and it's kind of funny, we've got a hole here. I could actually cut off a peak, couple, a little bit of solder. Like I'll just take this little chunk and I could drop it down in this tube and put on top and just hold this down and heat it up. And when I do that, the uh, solder is going to melt and go hopefully where we want if I put enough of it in there. So we might just try that first here. Let's give that a shot. Once the solder melts, you got to let it cool to set up. If I got enough solder in there, if I got this to work out. I could let go of this and it could just fall down. Okay. That may have actually worked. Let's let me let this cool off and take a look at it here. Okay, so that uh, that did work. It's really hot still, but it is rock solid. None of my solders come out. The only problem is, and this hole is the front, by the way. Uh, I don't know if you can see here. It's just slightly crooked. It needs to bend that way. So now begins the game. I'm going to heat this up again and lean it just slightly back uh, until I'm happy with it. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat this. We've got one more big piece that goes up on top here. And then we've got a tiny little piece that goes on after that. This piece we may end up throwing CA glue on or something because this brass is really small and that torch is a lot of heat for it uh, at that point. So anyway, I'm going to continue on. That's the process. Soldering this until it's straight and as I can get it and we're going to call it good. All right, I'll get back to you here. Pressing on. Okay, so that's basically the end of that. Uh, this is as straight as I can get it. There's a hair of a wobble in it. This, you know, down here this support doesn't count. Um, but otherwise, if I spin it from here, it's pretty straight. And I didn't have any trouble with the uh, solder. Let me go ahead, I'll zoom in and show you. Oh, I did have trouble up here, not with the solder, but there were machine marks really bad on this part of the mast. And I think they could see this flat area. So I... Did the best I can could to smooth that out, but hopefully the primer uh, and paint will take care of the rest of that. Let me give you a couple close-ups here. Okay, so this is the very, very top of the mast. That's how that turned out. Next joint right here, you can see this is it. You can see some of the flux had dripped out. I got a little hair of excess poking out right there. And then uh, where is it at? Down here. That ugly hole is machined from Pontos, or from KA, hopefully it's not a problem, but this right here where my thumb is, that's the joint. Uh, so anyway, it turned out nice. It didn't take too much to get it straight. Okay, so now we've arrived back here at monkeying with this hole arrangement. Uh, what I want to do is get a hole drilled through the center of this thing that matches the brass barrel exactly. So I'm going to do that with the same drill that you saw earlier. And then i got to go ahead and do some cleaning out in here. Let me show you that. Okay, looking down inside of the mast hole, that light gray area at the bottom towards my finger, that's the step left in there naturally by the kit. I need to remove a chunk of that because it's in the halfway point and I need to run my drill bit down through there. And so I'll do that with a hobby knife. I'll just take this 
and I'll go down in here and I will make some cuts until uh, I've removed that piece of plastic. Then the tricky part is I will drill a hole very carefully down through here for our mast and we'll check our angles and everything. So let me get back to you. I'm going to I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to put a hole in our piece of uh, resin and then I'll come back with drilling all the way through. Okay, so our piece is installed. I've got a hole through it already. I've got Orion straight and this is going to help get this drill bit started at the right angle or close to it. This whole thing is going to involve some modification and bending, which we'll be able to do because of this brass tube that I've put through here. But I want this drill bit to go all the way through both decks uh, so that my brass rod will fit through and the whole thing will hold steady and straight. And then we can monkey with the angle and stuff. And we can also then go bother putting all the rest of our fittings on. So I'll continue drilling this hole. We'll come back to you. All right, I finished drilling the hole right here, and then I've got our mast. I've I've gone ahead and slid our uh, photo etch piece on here. Or sorry, I keep saying photo etch. 3D printed part, the base on here, and glued it into position with the front being front. And uh, yeah, I'll just go ahead and slide this down in like that. Now it's really in there. And it comes out, but it is taut. It is snug. I am not going to glue it. My plan for final installation is to leave it like this. So the, in, in the event that uh, my, pus, my uh, customer leaves this to the Smithsonian and they need to fix it someday, Smithsonian folks, you can just pull this straight out. Uh, so there it is. That's the mast initially installed. It goes way up there like this. All right, so things we got to do. It's, it's leaning quite a bit back, but I actually believe this angle is correct. So let me show you why. From this point right here, the rigging goes up, the little things you would step on. It's supposed to go pretty much straight up and intersect, intersect the mast. I'm going to check this. Uh, I'm going to get my photo etch out and see if I've got that right. But otherwise, yeah, it's supposed to lean back, and then we want it, you know, left to right, straight in line with the funnel. Uh, this brass piece that I put down in there allows me to do that, to bend this, to get it moved where I want. And then uh, we'll, we'll take it out of there once I'm halfway satisfied with this and we'll, um, I'm not gonna show that because it's boring, I'm just gonna mend it. But we'll take it out and I'll come back, we'll start gluing our pieces on. All right, pressing on. Well, good morning everybody. So I kinda had a power night where I came down and got a bunch of stuff knocked out on this Ford mast and I apologize I didn't film it. It's not really that exciting. It's just a bunch of really tiny little photo etch parts that have been installed uh, including the boom right there. Um, so right here in this spot is where the crow's nest goes. I haven't installed that yet because it's supposed to be white and we're doing a different color for the mast. But I wanted to show you what we had uh, here so far. So I got to work out uh, a paint color um, with my client real quick. And then uh, we're going to move on. I think what I'm going to start doing next is working on the Marconi wires here the, for the... Um, for the radio to work. The radio room is over here and uh, they had big wires overhead that were attached to these masks. These masks, I gotta move this back. These masks, believe it or not, th the whole point is to hang the wires off of for the radio and they need to get them high enough to clear the acid from the stack and everything that was coming out of here. That's why they're so tall. Uh, if there had been a different way to run wires back then, uh, I bet you Titanic wouldn't have had a mass other than maybe for a crow's nest and it probably would have stopped you know somewhere here because I mean just look at the bridge the bridge is here come across that's basically right here the crow's nest is up there so really only doubling the distance they can see anyway it's just kind of an interesting uh, design feature here so I'm sorry I didn't film me in this detail it's just a bunch of little fiddly parts I've left the um, brass uh, bells off. We'll go ahead and put those on 
after this is painted and I've dropped it in the final time. All right, let's press on. Okay, back in action here. We have the crow's nest. I apologize. I did a little bit of work on it uh, to get it to this point. Basically, I just annealed this metal and folded it around. Um, my, it would have been a video of all my fingers in the way. So that's why I'm part of the reason not showing it. And then on the inside, I dropped our little grate and put our two boxes on. So um, what some of you who've built the kit will know is that there are three little brass rods attached to the bottom here. Those snapped off on me almost immediately. I have saved them. We'll put them on uh, when we're done. So I've decided instead to try and do what could potentially be a frustrating yet seemingly simple thing of setting uh, this piece up on top to be glued into position. In fact, I'm going to help myself out, and you should too. The first thing you want to do is anchor this thing in place so it's not wobbling down, wo wobbling around. Okay, so there it is. Uh, this actually, yeah, I don't know why I didn't think of this for. So it's stuck down. It's not going to move. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, CA glue, and I'm just going to set it on the rim here. Uh, if you don't get the shape right of the crow's nest, this won't work out very well. But if you can't get the crow's nest perfect, this will hide it, and that's really convenient. So I want to get it in my tweezers and hold it flat. And we'll put it in position just like that. I'll double check it. Oh, see how I'm off? I'm a little crooked there on the right. That looks pretty good. So we'll call that good. I'll double check it here. And uh, then there's a, these tiny little things that stick up on top. Uh, I think we'll wait until it's attached to the mast first before we do that. I'm pressing on. Okay, uh, moving along, we're back to our Ford mast here. This has been primed in white, and we've got our paint down here ready to go. And as you can see, um, it's kind of a dark color. This is actually Model Master's Rust. My client uh, looked at several different colors that we tried out on the mast, and this is the one that he has chosen for his mast. And it's the color that I actually used on top of all of the uh, railings and the trim work on the external part of Titanic. I think that Model Master Rust is, at this scale, an excellent wood color, um, which is why I used it on the wood parts of the ship. Now, obviously, the mast is supposed to be, per the instructions, my instructions, I mean... Um, my reference books, uh, Dark Mast is the color. And that's a color made up by uh, White Star Lime. And I have put my own rendition of that on the ship in the appropriate spots. That was the first color that I painted the mast. I showed it to my customer, uh, and he was like, I don't like that. And in his ship, the color scheme is based on the Ken Marshall paintings. And Ken Marshall had never painted the mast uh, masked red, or dark mass, sorry, uh, in most of his paintings. They were some sort of brown. So that's what we're applying here. Now, take a quick time out here for a half a second. All right, so this is my Model Master Rust that I have left in nail paint, and you're getting, oh, I can't get this, Ben. Fine. Uh, Life Color, LC16, and notice FS... 30076. This is Matt Ross Sienna. It is extremely close to the exact same color. Um, and then Rust, this is 1785. Uh, I haven't looked. Go to Life. I just have this bottle. And I know that they're extremely close because I've used them before. But see, it's got an FS number down there. Uh, see if you can go to Life Color's website and see if they have a uh, 1785. This is enamel. This is acrylic, great paint, applies the same way as this, uh, and you'll end up with something the same, especially if you if you like this finish. So anyway, we're going to press on with the painting here and uh, move along with construction because I've also primed up, I've primed the uh, crow's nest because it's supposed to be white. i got to get the, the real white on it and kind of finish up, and then we'll put the two together and start moving along with the rest of the stuff on the ship. All right, press on. 
Okay, some paint has been painted. We're back at it. Uh, this is either going to work out nicely or be a catastrophe right now. At this crow's nest. I mean, it, it looks straight, <laughs> I guess. Let me... Slight adjustment to it here. Um, I'm gonna let it set up for a second, and then I'll 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 change the angle and tip it up, and uh, make sure I'm happy with it. And then we have the three little bars that go on the bottom here. We need to install. Okay, so I am happy with that, which means I'm gonna come back now with my little brackets that snapped right off the second I tried to do any work to the crow's nest and honestly I don't know how it would have held up <laughs> until now anyway so yeah like that's one and then all right we'll let that dry up and we'll get some paint on we'll press on all right so now I think I'm pretty happy with this uh, I'm going to go ahead and install it like that. I'll have to make sure it's straight. I'll double check it. But uh, there it is for now. Our mast, uh, the derrick's installed. Um, so we need to hang the bells on it. And uh, that might be a trick. But we'll double check a couple things. So something that is worth noting is the angle. I, I forgive me. I can't remember if I said this before or not. Um, this is there we go. So right here up at an angle, basically like this, we have our support lines that are going to go up. In, in the old days, you know, the people would have crawled up the side of the mass on these things. Now they're just cables on Titanic to help hold in place. But from basically the edge of the weld deck here, at this point, straight up, they should intersect the uh, mast, which means you need to set the angle of the mast and the K piece, footing piece at the bottom kind of does it. Uh, back far enough to make sure that your photo etch reaches. Otherwise, you're going to have the mass leaning this way, and then you're going to have kind of a triangle thing going on like that. So uh, that's real important. And then obviously, you want to adjust it left and right and get your twist right. But it fits in there really snug. I'm not going to glue it down. Um, we are going to attach everything to it, and that will be nice. Uh, so when you do all of that, you have to also make sure you do it. Uh, to the one in the back, which is hard to see. Way the heck back there in the stern. Same thing, you gotta get the angle right and you gotta get them lined up. Now, what I wanna do is focus on uh, a big key component to this whole thing, and that is the uh, Marconi wires. They, the antennas, stretch from one end to the other of the ship. That's the whole point of the mass being this tall on Titanic. And then I think uh, somewhere up here from the middle, they got a couple lines reaching up. Uh, as far as I could tell, interestingly enough, the Marconi lines only go to about here, about halfway down the ship. Then there's an insulator, and it says, the uh, drawing says it's tarred hemp rope that grows across there. So. Um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and transition to that business next. Pressing on. Okay, back in action. We have an operation going on here. Uh, this is the KA provided photo etch for the Marconi wires. You get this folded apparatus and you get a, uh, a piece of brass to run through there and then you fold some pieces together and this is it. You, they don't give you the lines, but these drop down on either end of the mass. So, I want to use these, um, and I really hope 
this all goes smoothly and does not break and fall apart on me. But the thing is, is they're super, super fragile. So I have opted instead of CA glue to solder them. And what I've done is taken a toothpick, I've put a very tiny piece or dab of flux down here on the uh, brass and that is where I want my solder to go. So the idea is that the solder, whoop, I gotta reload my soldering iron tip here. The idea is that the solder, when it melts onto the brass, will go where the flux is at and not all over the place everywhere else is what we're trying to do. Uh, and I've got it taped to stay in place. All right, so that takes care of that. So now I've connected this rod to these points and that's great. There's just a teeny tiny hair of a line right here connecting these brass parts together. And so what I'm gonna do now, I thought I put some here. I'm gonna put a little solder on this edge. I wanna bridge that gap with the tiniest bit of solder. Like you don't wanna glop a big chunk on because otherwise it looks silly. We want it to still look scale. And then when I run my wire, the plan was with the wire, we were looking up here at this piece to just attach, solder it here, but then I'm counting on all of this to hold the whole thing together. Depending on how things go, I may bend the wire and connect it here, here, and up onto here um, so that it, it holds up. I, I, don't, I don't really know for sure. So, let's just do, I just put in a little bit, I'm trying to put, a little bit to bridge this gap or reinforce this little spot. because it's just a tiny, tiny piece of uh, brass right there and I'd rather at least coat it. That was a good pass. That one's good, there's a little extra there. I'd like to bridge it, there we go, with some solder. That's good too. That'll help reinforce all this. So uh, that's what we're doing here. Let me get this wrapped up and we'll, we'll move on to connecting our Marconi wires. Okay, back in action. So what this part worked out fine. What I've done is I've gone ahead and I've attached, while well, I'm getting ready to attach my wire. The wire is a number eight electric guitar string, uh, the high E string. It's the smallest one I could get. What I've decided is, and the real thing would have terminated right here, connected here, and then ran out. Uh, but in an effort to minimize the load put on these things I've gone ahead and kinked it right here so the wire comes up goes to here and hangs a right I'm going to apply solder to the brass arm up here this point and right here uh, so the, the idea being that they will that it'll hold itself together so what I'm doing right now my soldering iron's heating back up I'm going to go ahead and put a bunch of flux or sorry, resin, uh, yeah, resin flux, right? Lead-free soldering paste, that's what I'm using. I guess flux is the word. Uh, to this edge, and for funsies, I'll put a big glob down here. I'll end up pinching this together, kind of to get this right. Uh, and then we'll put a little right there. So it's taped down, and the idea is get my solder here. I think we've got some on the iron. This is hot enough. Whoa. It moved. Here we go. Not quite how I want. I wanted it to not lay next to each other but kind of get on top of each other. There we go. There. I think that's okay. Um, and then, yeah, I'm going to continue on here. I see my battery's dying. We'll pinch this together. There we go. 
now it's all connected. So I'll continue doing that on through the rest of these. All right, press on. Okay, here's the first end uh, and all of its naked glory complete. So there you can see my solder job. Um, the ends up here are a little bit heavier than I would like. But again, we're going to be seeing this from really far away and I have to paint it still. But we have our four lines going out and I'm confident about the contact. This is making me feel good. So I made some measurements. Um, this is my my chart that works for myself. Basically 33 and 3 quarter inches for my math is from this point to this point, which if we come back over here, what I'm measuring from is right here all the way over 33 and 3 quarter inches to the same distance uh, on the other side. So, and then I have like, I guess 34 and a half to basically go all the way over in a quarter inch past, right? So that would be from here to here and then another quarter inch. Uh, so now I'm not worried about these being too tight. In fact, I want there to be a little bit of a space. Um, there's, it's supposed to droop ever so on the way back there. And it's supposed to have a nice natural droop, and then two lines come off of it down to the Marconi room. That's why, part of the reason I'm going with the steel wire, the real-life steel wire, because we should get that natural droop. And then I might mess with some guitar string to connect the two, or I'll just use the regular rigging wire that goes down. So now I have to set up. I'm going to take this and flip it over. Uh, and I'm going to run it over to the far end of my bench here and tape it down and make a line and get ready to measure out uh, and precisely solder the next pieces on. They all have to be the same. So, yeah, let me get that set up. Okay, so here's my setup, and I realize it's just mostly a bunch of tape and maybe can make out the wire. Uh, down here, I've gone ahead and taped our piece in and ran our wires evenly spaced apart all the way down to here. And I've drawn a line on our uh, my block, and this is, I gave myself an extra quarter inch because I want there to be a little sag. But essentially, that's how it would sit, right? So I'm gonna be able to cut each of these and bend them one at a time and solder them into place. The only wild card, Hopefully you can see it is right here. See this little bend? We'll call this the third wire. This wire, when it unrolled, was straight all the way until here. And then it, it wants to curve and kind of go every which way. As a guitar string, it's not a big deal. You just tighten up and who cares? I need this to hang uh, and droop naturally. The other three wires are straight and are doing that. I don't know what's going to happen here. I have one more wire uh, as a backup in case this doesn't work. Um, maybe heating it will do something. I'm a little concerned, but I've, I've gone so far down this road that I would rather fit them all and discover that one's a problem and take it off than uh, just start over right now. I'm going to roll the dice. So what I'm going to do is solder these up. We'll take it apart and see where we're at. Press on. All right. We are at a unique point in our journey here. So uh, this end soldered on. I tried as best as I could to keep the tension even uh, so that they would lay down so that they'll lay the same amount I guess uh, so there's only one thing left to do I'm going to remove this tape very carefully here and I'm gonna place these parts on this part on the ship hopefully without wrecking anything uh, also very I don't know how straight gonna be slide it down to where it stops okay this is our initial results I would say we have way too much slack uh, but the concept worked you guys can see that so somehow we ended up with too much slack yeah, so this is the idea, and <laughs> you, I'm a nervous wreck watching all of this. Don't, don't even, this is 
making me very nervous. All right. Anyway, so I like the concept. We're going the right direction. It's just too long. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this off and sort it out, uh, shorten it up a little bit and see if we can't get it straight. I also think that I'm going to have to replace this wire. The, the bend in it is just causing it to not lay nice. The other three wires have this nice even droop and are doing what I want. Uh, this one's not. The other ones are also just too long. So we'll have to make an adjustment there as well. Okay, I'm going to fix all this and then come back to you. Press on. Okay, here we are back on the wobbly cam. Um, so hopefully you can see that glare. I've got the wires, the four wires installed. I am not 100% happy with them, but I guess the honest truth is I'm not 100% happy with anything, usually. Uh, the guitar string wire, for the most part, is perfectly straight, uh, but I had a couple that just had a bend in it that I could not get out. That was really frustrating but i got it basically where i wanted and most importantly fairly i'm having you look at the glint there fairly even with one another there's a little bit of variation up and down but i just don't have the ability to figure out how to get that tension exactly right perhaps if i had used a different material i don't know but i have to ship this i want it to last a long time. I ended up with a little bit more solder up here on uh, this piece than I wanted, uh, but I'll clean it up later and it'll be fine. In the back here, this one, get the, the black there, this one did a lot better. So it's not painted yet. Um, I think, I'm going to do a little research, but I think this is probably going to end up black. Uh, and then I was just going to leave the cable the way that it is. If I recall correctly, the book says that... So first of all, the Marconi line only goes from here to about there. And then there's insulators. And then after that, from here back, it's coated hemp... Uh, black coated hemp um, line. So then, uh, yeah, it would be black back there at least back there and then up here it was like a copper coated or copper plated zinc or zinc plated copper wire i can't remember the exact description so yeah i gotta figure that out because painting this it's not impossible it'll just be a little bit frustrating and it kind of does stick out a little bit and then the right angles it disappears uh so i gotta figure that out and then it's fairly well i don't know if you can see that there it's it's fairly straight so it's a bunch of tweaking and how these um, I'm do it like that how these things sit you could you could turn them a little bit and move them up and down and monkey with the, there's a little bending a little adjustments you could do affect how the wire lays not to mention I, the two center wires I think if not more get lines up I gotta research that or you guys could yeah just comment they come up somehow into here. Uh, the other thing is the weight of the wires needs to do its thing. They need to they need to settle down a little bit. So I'm going to call it for the night. I'm pretty happy with this. It's 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 got the right angle. It's the right height with the right amount of droop per the drawing. This is the drawing that I'm using out of my book uh, Titanic Ship Magnific Magnificent Volume One. So this droop right here, and then we have these wires coming down right there. And then if I zoom in, what do we got here? This is the insulation, and then rope span tanned hemp. So it's tanned. And then this, it's kind of hard to read. Marconi twin wire T aerial. Looks like 716 stranded silicon bronze wire. Right. Yeah. So, that's what that is. That's what I'm going to say. All right. Um, yeah, I'm going to get back to you here probably tomorrow. Press on. 
All right, everybody, we are back. Uh, it's probably been about four or five days um, since I've been able to work on the ship because it was at work. So what I've done is I've installed our Marconi wires and the aerials, um, and they look they look good. They're painted up black is what I want to uh, do with them, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of hard to make out. But they're they're there. They're black. Um, and I think that's going to be really nice to find. So, uh, let's see. We've also added a couple other details. Let's, let's look at them. Okay, on the forward mast, I've gone ahead and installed the bell. As you can see up there in the crow's nest. This was rang um, once for a drink, twice for a sandwich, and a gazillion times if you saw something in front of you, like an iceberg. Uh, down here is another bell. I don't know what that is for other than clanging away, but we've got that installed. Uh, now let's move on to the Marconi room stuff. All right, so the we installed the wires up above, we're fussing with, and then right here, this is the Marconi rooms located down here. Uh, and so what happens here is we've got this little support. I've put a guide wire on here that goes to the center. This is in the ship's drawings. Um, I'm going to paint this black, and they've got two little wires that come off. They go into this little pier, and then they would go down into the receiver room. Off of this point here, I'm going to run my four wires up to uh, the Marconi wires located up above, and we'll attach them. There's four, kind of like right in here above the number two stack, right, right about in here, and they'll come down. This is the T-wire uh, arrangement. L's, I guess, are preferred, but T's are more um, efficient. And the way the T works is the line, the reason they call that the line's the top of the T, and then you have a line coming down, and see we have a T shape. So let's get some of our, we're going to switch to thread. I'm going to run those down from here and then join them up. All right, press on. All right, so here are our aerials and then the lead lines coming down. Now these are thread, uh, I just touched them in the position with the dot of CA glue and put a little kicker on them so that they hold up. Now, not painted yet, uh, this is the lead-in aerial stay line, and then the four wires need to terminate right at this tip, and then these are the two lead lines going in and down to the Marconi room uh, to the receiver transmitter. So, what that means is I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab each one of these lines and try and get them halfway tautish and terminate them to the tip of the lead-in stay line. And what I did is this little wire comes up and I put a little 90 degree in it. You can't see it. There's a tiny 90 there. And that, I hope, is going to enable me to um, terminate my wires there. So, again, this is the lead-in stay line. Our four wires will meet here. There's like an insulator or something there. And then these wires go down into the Marconi, Marconi um, room right there. So, yes, that is my story. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that here off camera because it's just going to be tedious. But we'll just put a dot of CA glue in there, grab each one of these, and then uh, I'll pull it to that point. Okay, press it on. Okay, back in action on the wobbly can. Uh, let's see here. There's the aerials, the lines coming down, terminating to the uh, aerial lead-in line, or lead-in stay, sorry, and then going over to the uh, little top of the Marconi room, uh, which is very nice. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode because it's about the masts, right? Uh, with the aerials hung in. No, not all the details in yet. Not it's we're obviously not rigged up all the way. I think right there you can see them. Uh, but we've got our angle right. We've got a lot of the detail installed, and we're in a good position to press on. Uh, so I apologize about the camera's focus here. This is we're working on. Um, so. We're working on, we're going to be changing the shop uh, one of these days here. You're not going to see a lot of this stuff in the background, which will hopefully make editing and cutting these videos easier. But we've got our angle right back here uh, for the aft mast. And the same thing is going on up here in the bow. 
which I'm really happy about. Uh, we have not put, obviously, the the rigging in that goes sideways here, uh, the little, uh, I would say it's the, the area that you climb up to get in the mast, but that's just not true on Titanic. Those actually were functionally cables that help stabilize it. You wouldn't climb up it that way. Uh, but now, so this area is done except for rigging. And way back, i to walk all the way back here. We've got a bunch of stuff we have to do back here. And that is also why I have not put the supporting wires up in here because I have to reach down inside. And then, of course, major construction project back here, right? So we want to get all the hardware uh, and physical plastic parts and everything installed, then come back and continue on uh, rigging the ship up. So, uh, you know, up close there's something to look at. You get far away, it's a little exaggerated maybe a little bit heavier than one might like. And I would consider doing this out of uh, my thread so that you have, if you can see here, the thread coming down. I would have preferred that thickness. The issue is, like I mentioned before, where I have to ship this thing, it's gonna be in the sunlight. I want it to last a really, really long time. So we have you know, our heavy duty brass uh, mass coming up. It's all soldered together. It's dropped down into the deck. Same thing on the back. So it, if it needed to wiggle, it could, uh, but it shouldn't come apart. It should last a very, very, very long time. So that's going to be it for now. That's our brass or our uh, mass installed for the time being, and we're going to press on to the next thing. All right, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Really do appreciate it, especially our Patreon contributors. Let's see you next time.